Hey guys, it's been a little while since I've done any video making. Uh, things happened, but we are now entering one of my favorite seasons, that is fall. The other favorite season being winter because I just like warm cozy jumpers and things. Um, so I thought I would start off my little fall makeup escapades by doing a beautiful kind of reddish brown smoky eye look. Um, so I thought I would do that and also go into a um, like base makeup stuff. And then after that, uh, you guys can look forward to a couple of Halloween tutorials. So without further ado, I'm going to jump into it. So I'm going to start off with a primer, which um, I've recently started using quite a lot. It's the Master Prime in this beautiful green. Um, and the reason being that I have quite a lot of redness on my cheeks and my nose and stuff. And this is supposed to help cancel it out. Uh, not entirely sure, but it's a good primer. Don't know whether it actually cancels out a lot of the green, but whatever. It's still a good primer, so. We're just going to take a dollop on my hand and see it does look kind of greenish, a little bit. And we're just going to gently, gently rub it into your face. If you do too much rubbing, you make the redness worse, so. And then I'm going in with my eyeshadow primer. This is from a pharmacy local brand. Atos, um, pharmacy, drugstore, I don't know, drugstore, I think, yes, drugstore. Um, it's Atos home brand. It's actually really good. I'm very pleasantly surprised by how good it is. So, I'm um, just going to pop up this mirror here. At all. I mean, as far as primers go, from what I've tried, I mean, I also have the, um, NYX eyeshadow base, this one, but I will not say that I have been very impressed by it so far, so I'm just going to and try and focus on not putting the mirror too much in front of the camera. So, right, make sure uh, what I do with eyeshadow primer is something that some people friends have asked me about is how do you get the eyeshadow primer to work. I just rub it into my eyes until it becomes slightly sticky feeling. That's when I know it's good. Now I'm just going to let all this sink in for a moment. All right, so I've let the primer sit for a little bit because I feel that it absorbs into the skin better before we get into things like foundation. The foundation we are going to be using, or I'm going to be using, is the L'Oreal True Match. The color I have here is Ivory Rose, or Rose Ivory, I don't know. Um, I didn't use this for a while, but I have discovered that I do like it the most out of the drugstore foundations I've tried. I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand because, I don't know, I don't have a glass palette or anything like that to use. And we're going to take this Real Techniques Beauty Blender spongy thing, and now I'm going to have to put down Sorry. <laughs> this foundation's quite good because it's very light. Like it doesn't feel very heavy on the skin, but it has quite a lot of coverage. Particularly for drugstore, I'm very impressed with the amount of coverage that it gives. Just to see if you can tell, foundation, no foundation. So I'm going to spread that, of course, but. And let me just make sure that everything's nicely blended in. We don't have any weird lines because no one wants that and it doesn't look very charming. So. Sorry, I'm going to try and blend it. A little bit as well. <sighs> Bangs are a great idea. They look fantastic, but damn it, they keep getting in the way. Also, make sure that it's properly blended around the nose. So I always forget. <laughs> and then I have like a little non blended patch by my nose, and I'm pretty sure that looks very ridiculous. Uh, concealer. This is the 
L'Oreal True Match Concealer. I have this one in Rose Ivory. Again, this concealer is good, but it has this smell, or not a smell, but something when I put it near my eyes, my eyes start to water a little bit. I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. So, but aside from that, it's great. I just, what's in it <laughs> that's making it smell so bad? And that has me a little worried. Well, well, I'm going to... See, there it goes. Ah, oh. It's almost like they put onions in it or something. Super weird. So I'm just going to put it on any spot that I feel need a little bit of extra concealing. Uh, particularly around my eyes. It's beautiful um, because I have very blue under eye area. Blue, blue under eye. I have a very blue under eye area, and then I'm going to take the top of the beauty sponge, or you can use the flat side as well, because I think that actually works quite well. Um, to just blendy, blendy, blendy in. The interesting thing is once I've blended it in, that weird smell or something that makes my eyes water goes away. It's just gone. And the good thing is that I haven't noticed this creasing particularly bad and, and that's quite nice because I have, when I smile, like, the entire eye area creases. Mm. So it's nice to have a concealer that doesn't go sit into those creases because most of the time I've had a little bit of a struggle with that. So I'm just going to pull my hair aside a little bit again because we are going to set the face. I should probably show you. This is the Maybelline Matte Maker. Yes. Uh, and this is in the color Nude Beige. For some reason that's my color here. Um, and we're going to set the under eye area first. I'm going to take a fluffy flat brush and we're just going to... There we go. I also like to use this as a setting powder for the eyeshadow primer because by setting it you're preventing any eyeshadow from like clumping on it and if you're using something that's skin toned it doesn't matter if it clumps because it's the color of your skin. <laughs> All right, now I prefer to powder in areas that need them and not over my entire face so we're doing the nose. And then just the T-zone. I'm going to take a kabuki brush. I'm just going to lightly. Now we're going into a light contour. And what I use for the light contour is the NYX High Definition Blush. It looks like this. And the color it's in is taupe. And I'm going to be taking a slightly angled fluffy brush. Like I said, we're not contouring like crazy. Just dip it in a little and then just all circular motions to just give our cheeks a little bit of definition. Now, I'm lucky that I have like a slight dent visible on my cheek anyway, but if you don't, just go. Very charming, I know. Just follow that line. I'm going to put a little bit here um, where you have the dent in your skull. Oh, that's not a little bit there. <laughs> Dear God, I went a little bit crazy on this side. I'm sorry, but that's what blending is for. Yay. And then we're gonna run a little bit under the jawline. Yeah, we're contouring the nose. So I take a slightly thinner fluffy brush. Hello. Yes, see like this. Um, and then we just dip it a little bit, tiny bit into it, and then you just follow the edge of your nose. And the reason that I'm using a fluffy brush is that it already blends it so you don't end up with any harsh lines, making it much easier to blend into everything else. Now you don't have to contour your nose. I like contouring my nose sometimes. Mm, sometimes I don't contour it at all. Alright, nose done! Yes. 
now that we've gone through the face, I'm going to, I think we should do brows first. Brows kind of frame the face for the makeup. So we're going to take this spoolie brush. It's called a spoolie. I'm going to brush our brows. There we go. That was some good shape brows. And I'm going to be using the L'Oreal Paradise Pomade Ecstatic. It looks like yes. And the color is Chitane. It's a brow gel pomade. Yeah, I like it. It comes with a little brush. It's very useful. And then you screw open this top. And then you have a pomade. Yay. This is for blonde, I think. And my hair is fairly blonde, so that makes sense, right? So we get a little bit on the brush, and then we start carving out the brows. So what I like to do is I just draw a line along the bottom of the brow, and then I blend up. Now for the outer edge, I do also draw a line because we want that nice and crisp. So yeah. It's also because the hairs on the outer part of my brow are more sparse for some reason. I appear to be slightly bald here, brow-wise. All right. So after drawing them in, look, some good looking brows now, um, I take this spoolie brush again and give a quick run through to make sure the products spread nicely and it's not clumping anywhere weird. So also thanks to my sister for this mirror. Fantastic. It works absolute wonders. And so it's got this nice little like flappy thing at the back here that I don't want. Okay, eyeshadow time. Um, so I'm going to be using the Makeup Revolution Fortune Favors the Brave. As you can see, it is fairly old. Uh, well, it's actually not that old, it's just very beat up. Um, and since we're going for burgundy, the color that we shall be using is this one, right here. But that's not the only color we're going to be using, or the only palette we're going to be using, um, because I have other color in another color in here that also works really well and this is the Zoeva Smoky palette um, does not come with mirror very sad but the other options that you could use are these and these so I'm gonna be using this as a transition and this one as another transition I sort of put this all over the lid then add that as a transition because it's a little bit lighter than the one in the fortune favors the brave and then we're jumping into the fortune favors the brave so Let's get my brushes out. Okay, so I'm going to be using a flat, fluffy brush. I actually like these brushes. I think I got them off Attitude, um, which is a goth clothing and fashion shop. And they had this one that was like a mermaid brush set, and it came in a beautiful little pouch that was shaped like a seashell. Fantastic idea. Absolute genius right there. But they're really, really, I'm, I'm very pleasantly surprised I very much like them okay so what we're going to be doing is just taking this all over the lid and I like to take it a little bit above my crease because simply put I have hooded eyes and if I take it a little bit above then my eyes look less hooded and a little bit below I'm hoping you can see this I'm going to show you on the other eye again So what I'm essentially doing is taking it onto the bone of the eye socket um, and in doing so kind of creating a new crease sort of idea. Very good. <clears throat> okay, then for the um, crease color, we're going to add that second brown 
that I was talking about in the Zoeva palette. I'm just going to, again, above my actual crease. Oh, now the brightness is gone. Oh, I'm going to have to murder the sun. I'm sorry. So we're going to take that above the actual crease. And I mean, you have to admit, the pigmentation on this Zoeva palette is amazing. It's fantastic. Okay. So that's it for those browns. And now we're going to break into the fortune favors. The brave. Brave. And we're going into a really beautiful burgundy color. I'm going to be using this flat, officially concealer brush, but whatever. Um, to really be able to pack on the pigment. So if you hear any weird noises from outside, the window isn't even open, but, or like weird thunking noises, it's probably the elevator. Because our elevator thunks, apparently. So we're gonna be taking that pigment and we're gonna be putting it on the outer edge of the eye. And what I also very much like to do is bring it in on the inner part. Just there. And then we'll blend it in nicely in a minute. Let's make sure we even on both sides. And then I just like to bring get under the lash line a little bit and I'm just gonna do this little there okay now we're going to blend and for that we have this beautiful fluffy blending brush and go Small circular motions. It helps to have eyeshadows that blend really well. But if you don't, then my suggestion is taking the color that you put all over your lid or a translucent powder or some sort of powder to help build up the powderiness so that you can actually blend it. Now, I will say that this eyeshadow does have a lot of fallout, which is a bit irritating, but You want to also make sure that your blending brush does not have any weird pigment on it because you're trying to smooth out an eyeshadow knot. I kind of almost connect the colors just simply through blending. Blendy, blendy, blend. Okay, now I don't know if you can see, but I have a little bit of fallout here and here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the kabuki brush and just, whoops, just gently flick it away from your face. And usually that'll get rid of any fallout that you might have. So we have here the eyeshadow. Okay. Now you can leave the look here, just throw in some mascara and it'll look great. Or you can go for some eyeliner. I don't want to do too much eyeliner because I kind of want the eyeshadow to still be visible. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking my super skinny marker, my super NYX super skinny eyeliner, and the uh, Maybelline Color Show Cold Pencil. Please focus. There we go. And the Cold Pencil I'm just going to line the waterline with and a little bit underneath. So here we go. I always end up stabbing myself in the eye. And a little bit on the lower water line. Just the outer corner though. <sighs> okay, this one's almost out, which is a bit sad. But uh, just going to very quickly do a line.
So yes, I have done a slight winged liner, but I kept the line as thin as possible so as to not take away too much from the eyeshadow. Then, finally, mascara. And we're going to be using the Falsies Push-Up Angel from L'Oreal. Oh no, this one's Maybelline. Sorry. <laughs> I usually switch between L'Oreal and Maybelline. This is the brush type that we're using. Pigment because my lashes are roughly the same color as this <laughs> and on eyes it doesn't really like they don't really stand out so yay blonde lashes and then just a tiny bit on my lower lashes what i always like to do is I like to do my upper lashes first to get most of the pigment up there and then with the leftover pigment on the brush i do my lower lashes that way you don't run the risk of making your lower lashes too cray cray. That's a big risk. Sorry. Getting used to filming with this new mirror. I found that by blinking into the mascara, you create the most lift. And voila. Finally, all that is really left. And I know, this sounds like a lot of work. And I'm a crazy person, and whatever. All that is really left is some form of a highlight. Now you can use an actual highlighter. I personally really like this Minerals Eye Powder. I have no idea what the brand is. Or the color is apparently 01. Um, I'm th I think it's a L'Oreal one, but I'm not sure it's anyway, it's an eye pigment like a mineral eye powder and it's very very sparkly and also very very like it fluffs everywhere and we're just going to add a little bit of an inner corner highlight a little bit under the brows and then over the cheeks um, so I'm going to take a very thin brush a very small eyeshadow brush for the inner corners and we're just going to get a little bit of the pigment on the brush not too much because then it gets everywhere and we're just going to and the other side with the eyes done i thought let's add a little lipstick now you can leave your lips very neutral if that's what you prefer but you can also add lipstick which is what I like to do um, and I go for this one's even called bold <laughs> this is the midnight merlot bold color central from Maybelline it is beautiful and I'm going to be pairing it with a shaping liner in rich wine so give you an idea look at that color that is a beautiful color so I'm going to be doing my lips uh, nothing too fancy about it but I thought I'd show you anyway and I personally like pairing a bold lip with a bold eye that's just me you could also keep your lips very very neutral just throw on a light pink or brown or something whatever you want but I'm a fan of bold lips so yeah I look crazy <laughs> um very important after you do the lip liner. Now you can put lip liner all over your lips. Mm. Effort. Besides the staying power of this lipstick is pretty amazing. All right, what I also prefer to do with this is I take a very small flat brush and then I just to help fill in any edges or weird spots like that. Um, to make sure that all the lines are nice and smooth. I don't usually do the um, lip brushy thing with lighter lipsticks because I don't think it's as necessary. This lighting is killing me. Now sometimes I will over exaggerate my Cupid's bow uh, making it much more prominent but today I kind of like this it's 
so there we have it the completed final look now like i said you can also just pair this with a plain brown lipstick if that's what you're feeling more um but i love this lipstick color i really do i adore it so much anyway um so that's it for the tutorial i hope you enjoyed this beautiful burgundy eye look um that is very full leaves inspired because it's so much fun to run through leaves um I've also got my little pumpkin. Pumpkin. I don't know where his face is. Where is your face? There it is. Hey. Um, so, I love fall. I thought I would share this beautiful fall inspired makeup look with you. Um, I will be doing more, you know, the everyday stuff where I'm just like, I can't be bothered to work with colours. Um, and stuff like that. But, I will also be sharing my Halloween looks with you. I've done... Halloween for many 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 years and there are a couple of looks I was really really proud of that I would love to um, share with you guys and those are a por broken porcelain doll witch look more witchy than usual <laughs> um a was the only vampire and then this year I'm going to be doing for the first time a dark forest nymph look I hope you enjoyed this please like and subscribe and stuff and I'll see you next time. Bye.